from Seattle, Washington. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. On the ground at LinuxCon North America 2015. Now, here's your host, Jeff Frick. And we're really excited to have a frequent Cube alumni, Diana Muller, the Director of Community Development, Red Hat OpenShift. Welcome. Well, thank you very much, and I'm so pleased to be here at LinuxCon. It's just a, an awesome event this year. They've had some amazing keynote speakers, Robin Chase, um, one of my gurus with her current Peers Inc. book and uh, Mari from uh, Intel. There's just been some amazing women that have been on the stage and just doing great work here. So uh, um, kudos to LinuxCon for a great conference this year. So talk about the vibe, because we're here, this is day three. This has been going on for a while, but the place is still packed. There's still a lot of action. And generally, you know, everybody's there for, for day one, usually the big keynote, and it kind of spills over. But usually by day three, people are kind of scooting. People are trying to get to the needle or, you know, one of the museums or something by day three. We, I just walked out of a, a packed session on repeatable processes um, that uh, Ryan Jarvanen did on showing how to go from source code to Docker images and do it all securely with a little bit of Dan Walsh mixed in to um, really, and every time we put on one of these rooms, these rooms are packed. It's, it's great because the, you know, the keynotes are there in the morning, they're wonderful and everybody comes together for that. But every single room at this place this time has been packed and it's been really, it's been very good for Red Hat, it's been amazing for OpenShift. Um, and with our new release that just came out at Red Hat Summit about three months ago, we've gone, you know, to native Docker container support uh, on top of Kubernetes. So we're feeding into those communities and they're upstreaming into OpenShift right now. So we've got a huge, powerful base of community collaboration going on and most of those people are here. So I always joke with my, red. I work virtually from home up in Vancouver and I always joke is I come to the events like this so that I can meet everybody face to face <laughs> and, and nail them for more community work that right. I need to get done. So this is a great opportunity for me. This and, and maybe O'Reilly's OSCON are the two big ones where really the open source community do come together and here the Linux base of it is is here and vibrantly involved. So it's great. Well you don't give yourself enough credit. You're at a lot of places. We, we first met at <laughs> at OpenStack um, in Portland a couple years back. We saw you last year at OpenStack Silicon Valley, which we'll be back at next week. But I think what's interesting is just how open source, you know, Linux obviously is kind of the granddaddy of enterprise open source, but the open source movement continues to gain momentum. It continues to have more and more projects, and it really seems to be the model for rapid software innovation. Truly, and I think one of the things is there are many models of open source um, uh, community development. Uh, one of the ones that we're bringing to the f forefront now is something called OpenShift Commons, um, and that has been enabling us to do all this cross-community collaboration. And like there's the Linux Foundation and Apache Foundation and, and Eclipse and all kinds of other different models as well. But one of the things that you're really seeing now is these breakout projects like Docker and other things that are um, really getting momentum outside of um, the foundation model and sometimes they bring it in like with Run C and the Open Container Initiative um, or the Cloud Native Foundation. But um, we at um, Red Hat, we've been pushing an, another model called Commons in which what we're doing is trying to embrace all of the upstream projects like Kubernetes and Docker and even Ansible and Puppet and Nginx, all the different open source people uh, and this is why I'm on the road all the time because right, right. there's so there's many different, there's a lot of them that are all part and parcel of any open source project. And OpenShift sort of sits in the middle of all the service providers that are creating and extending the platform with new things like um, dashboards and SunGrid and Mailgun and all the different services that people use and consume to build the applications that run on OpenShift. And then all of the technology we use in OpenShift, like Kubernetes and Docker, and then all of the different platforms, like you mentioned, op you know, running on OpenStack and right. running on any cloud infrastructure or even on bare metal. So, and then underneath that is things like LinuxCon. You know, you have the Linux kernel guys that are helping us secure, you know, containers and make sure that everything, uh, you know, we saw some great stuff from Docker today, um, or Docker in the keynote the other day about um, uh, signing, key signing for um, uh, Docker images. And all of those things, it's a multi-threaded conversation. And so what we've tried to do with things like the OpenShift Commons is bring a place together where all those people can meet and have those conversations. And so. Right now, we're, I think we're right around 140 different organizations and companies, including customers, end users, contributors, 
some of the eight different hosting providers that are using OpenShift um, to deploy their public cloud. All of those people are coming together and are working on all of the technologies, not just the OpenShift itself, but um, the different pieces and parts. And that's what's really changing right now, I think, in open source, is that people are admitting that their projects are not closed cathedrals, right? They're not just reinventing the wheel because we need another um, orchestration tool. They're going out and working with other open source projects, like Kubernetes or Mesos or a bazillion others, and finding the best piece that fits that puzzle and working with that community. And I think that's a dynamic that I think in the past year has really been the change in the open source world, is that people are not trying to reinvent and projects aren't competing and butting heads um, trying to draw resources because I need this little CLI written or I need this little piece written. They'll go and they'll work with the OS tree or the etcd people and bring it all together and we'll contribute back into those code bases. It's, it's been huge the change and the evolution in what's going on in the collaboration across com communities. I, I think, really, this has been the breakout year for it. What, what do you think is driving that? Is it just because we're all kind of used now to building on the foundation of others and it's an API economy and it's really about being creative and assembling things in new and creative ways and from the application space? Or is it just that really open source now has got to the point where people see this is the way and, and whether I have some, some stuff outside of the, the core open source, but this is really the way to get things done quickly, efficiently, and with great innovation. Well, I think as, as I'm sure dozens of people have said in different ways at this conference and many other conferences, is that everybody has realized that the power of uh, closed communities is, is, is broken, right? You really have to, um, in order to get enough resources, enough brains to work on in solving problems, you have to collaborate and you have to reach outside of your insular worlds to do that. And Eric Raymond talked about it um, years ago in his, his book, The Cathedral and Bazaar. But um, we saw some monolithic you know, open source projects happen and fall down because they didn't open up the door and collaborate with the upstream or the downstream um, projects that worked with them. And I think this, this whole attitude has changed. It's been a huge flip in that. Um, and also, I mean, there's limited resources, right. right? So if you're reinventing the wheel, or if you're not working directly, like say with Docker, and putting, in, you're not going to get the things in Docker that you need for your project, right? right? So by embedding resources, we're sharing knowledge um, and making sure Docker is super secure and, and working with with them, so that it meets the multi-tenant model that we and the standards that we need to deploy enterprise workloads. You couldn't, if we tried to build some, that community ourselves, we'd be hooped. Um, but instead, the power of the open source community world has brought all of these people to bear. And if you think about what Docker Hub is, basically that's the base QA and testing you could possibly have of anybody's workflow is, is this going to work? Well, let's try uploading 10,000 images and see if, it, if they work. Um, and, and some of them, frankly, have um, need patches. They're not totally secure. They're not the best images in the world. And so at Red Hat, we're doing a lot of work to make sure that um, images can be certified and trusted, and um, some of the work that Docker is doing and people from Red Hat are doing to make sure that there's um, key and signed images, and so that those images you're downloading are secure. So all of that is, is working multiple communities together and um, playing well with each other, because there's no way we could do that ourselves. Right, right. But every coin has two sides, right? And we were at DockerCon, there's a ton of excitement. We are at Spark Summit, a ton of excitement. From the, from the corporate CIO's perspective, who's trying to make sense of this, this world that's evolving at such a crazy pace, what do you, what do you say when you're out talking to, to the consumers of this technology that, that are in the business of implementing it to get stuff done, not necessarily the business of building companies around it or, or developing it as a core competency? Because I just see the challenge and the, and the rate of, of change and the pace of change is just bananas. What do you tell them? What's, what's good advice? Well, um, come to Red Hat, <laughs> and, and you know, I, I think that one of the things is we have this breadth and depth of experience from the Linux world of creating the subscription model, having the trusted security, making sure that you know the patches and everything. We have that model of um, business that people trust, and I think that it's going to be a while before some of the smaller, newer companies get to that level of trust, and that's why working with Red Hat. Um, and helping to build uh, certified images like we have for, for containers, um, private registries, securing private registries, making that, making, leveraging the Red Hat know-how 
on delivering these projects, um, sharing that knowledge with the, across the community, um, allows people to come and have a trusted source to work with, our solution architects and other people, um, to help build out those enterprise things. I think CIOs and CTOs trust Red Hat to build things and huge government agencies are working with us and that will remain nameless and huge Probably education three yeah lots of <laughs> lots of three letters um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah Lots of three letters that would probably get me a lot of trouble for mentioning, um, but and I didn't. So it's called the ABC and the XYZ. Right. So when the you've got the the trust of large government agencies and financial institutions um, riding on you, and you know stock exchanges and things like that all running on RHEL, that same business know-how and to deliver um, open source in a secure, trusted way um, with the enterprise backup of support. I think that mo working together. Um, that feeds the Red Hat business model, but it also feeds everybody's enterprise models as well, nicely. So in other words, just 1-800-CALL-RED-HAT. Yeah, 1-800-CALL-RED-HAT. <laughs> All right, Diane, well thanks for stopping by, taking a few minutes out of your busy day. All right, thank you very much. Well, it's good to see you, and we'll probably see you next week in Silicon Valley. At the OpenSec one, because Open we run everywhere. Yeah, absolutely, so uh, thanks for stopping by. She's Diana Muller, I'm Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE.